גזול. Welcome to the hot kitchen of Yazol podcast. We are the three amigos, your story chefs on duty, cooking you some of the hottest stories from out there. Gisat Suko. And now, straight out of Vancouver, Canada, the big man, Zol Kebir on the wheels of steel. Please welcome DJ Bakumba. Hi, DJ Bakumba in the house, guys. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Okay, uh, <laughs> from Edmonton, his friends call him Le Japonais, music teacher and master guitarist. Please welcome Dennis Lisa. Hi everyone. Thank you. Yeah, and I am your chef on the grill, Dedi Sey, the Sultan of Small London, Zol Kebir Musuran Sele. So welcome. <laughs> Coming up today on your Zol podcast, the highlights. South Sudanese man sentenced to 20 years in a Kenyan jail for robbery. South Sudanese expert assumes top job at East African Regional Body. Ugandan man found with 24 human skulls. A love triangle turns very awry in Kenya, landing a Kenyan man in jail. Azul. Also, President Salva Kiir has Uh, after a consultative meeting postponed the national elections previously slated for December this year meaning the transition period has been extended to 2026 um yeah let's look and see what will happen the dean at the faculty of the university of juba has gone viral for the same because he has made a prediction of uh, south sudan's political trajectory that's from two years ago dr elfaki chol correctly predicted that the transitional period in South Sudan would be extended uh, extended up to 2026 the viral piece was posted on his facebook page uh, i'll read a little bit here cpa extension period was no cpa period was 6 years transition period 2011 to 2025 14 years additional transition period 2025 2026 one year so 6 plus 14 plus 1 is 21 years SPLM SPLA liberation struggle years from 20, from 1983 to 2005 21 years so dr chol concluded don't think out of this context what did he mean by that i don't know uh, you tell us uh, you can share your thoughts on our platforms too many questions maybe professor will explain to us soon dr chol is a current dean of uh, the faculty of law at the school of law at the university of juba okay since we are living in biblical times maybe dr cho uh chol should switch from professor to prophet to the case yeah i don't i don't know what um motivate him to write that article um but things in south sudan in terms of politics are kind of uh, quite predictable mm-hmm. uh people can make a wild guess and then come up uh, arrive at the same conclusion based on the parameters of what is happening in the in the country yeah i don't think the professor has kind of a no juju no juju inside no juju power it is just um <laughs> just pure um from what he can see mm-hmm. happening in, yeah, okay. based on the, the parameters of uh, okay, the political okay. uh, system that is happening yeah yeah the pro- uh, political climate okay um, yeah. bakumba any thoughts <clears throat> yeah i think uh that is the situation is that is the political is pretty much is is easy is easy, easy to predict actually that's a very rocket science okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. because uh because w- one thing people need to understand is like um uh, election is not just voting election is a process mm-hmm. you, need, you, need, you need you need proper proper preparation in independent situation is mm-hmm. independent military independent mm-hmm. police independent parliament like the, the checks and balances election is not just we could not think that we just wake up and line up and vote that is not election mm-hmm. election is a process you need to establish institutions that can actually mm-hmm. work that mm-hmm. can that can check on each other and then you can have a free and fair election like if mm-hmm. if if you are to go let's say let's say his excellency Musal Makiri allows election to take place tomorrow what are we are we actually electing i'm call it selection selection so instead of election okay yeah, election. yeah. No. selection is a process selection is an is is not even a process okay so mm. i was i was would have been a selection okay like in the next year it's yeah. a selection <laughs> okay because you don't have yeah. institution that will yeah 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 azul yeah. we're just a new nation yeah like if you compare us and then south sudan like we are just uh, new in the game mm. and if you can see what happened uh, when trump 
Like what exactly. happened? The instruction that happened, like uh, in 2021 or 22. Yeah. Uh, the one in January in 2022, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, you can see that there was a lot of chaos in America, like the system that has been established for a very long time, mm -hmm. and now they are having a problem with their election system. Okay. So how about us, the South Sudanese? So um, I think it's it's going to take us some time to come to that uh, system of a proper or uh, peaceful transition of power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Kenya used to have uh, what they call Mulalongo. You line up behind your, you know, your oh, choice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> be, be, because there was one time where I remember when we when 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 we used to uh, when we were in Juba and we used to we used to select our tribal chiefs. Yeah. One time we had a Mulalongo. They they, they line up time. So one, yeah. so, so, so one one person stand and. Uh, we, we have to mobilize our people. One of them was our, our, my uncle. So oh, okay. my uncle, his line was really sharp. <laughs> <laughs> the family was not su supportive. Huh? You didn't bribe enough people. What happened? Yeah, there was not enough bribing and we didn't have goods. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's go to our first story from South Sudan. Azul. In Juba. Rain could not stop the game also uh, at the at Juba National Stadium. Uh, where Tito Okello opened the score, board through a penalty at the 15th minute after he was taken down in the area. Bafana Bafana Sapolis followed with a goal after two minutes and closed the first half with a goal. And then a free kick from Tito Okello was converted into South Sudan's second goal by, uh, by Valentino Ewell at the 57th minute. But the match ended with Bright Stars losing 2-3 to three to the Bafana after a 94th minute uh, mm -hmm. free kick from South Africa turned into a volley from Bafana Bafana substitute Mbatha, which sank the bright star's hopes of pulling at least a draw in Juba. Uh, meanwhile, Uganda beat the Republic of Congo by 2-0 in the same group. Uh, and Kenya from the region beat Namibia by two goals to nil, and uh, Tanzania also beat Guinea by the same margin. Uh, the bright star's next fixtures will be on the October 7th and October 15th against Uganda, 11th November against Congo, and 19th against South Africa. That's November 19th. This, I hope, will be uh, more better. They'll bring us better wow. results because the bright stars, uh, I think the bright stars need to uh, eat Asida, Tegil Kida, Asida Bafna, Lotir, <laughs> min, 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 Torit in the coming days. No Bamiya, no Akilat Kafif, no spaghetti, no macaroni. Just heavy, mm. heavy luguma. I'll be giving you one gumbula, tawale, shaba gafadi, you know. I'll be giving you net. Uh, from mm -hmm. Azul, we wish them all the best on the October 7th match. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we support the national team. Yeah, yeah, Jamal, what, what are your thoughts on, on, on the game, the last game, Bakumba? Did you watch it? No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I saw the highlights. Yes. Uh, the highlights mm -hmm. here and there. I didn't, I was not able to watch it live, uh, because of the time difference. Okay. And then I think it was very impressive, actually, very impressive to, 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 to lose at the, at the, at the dying minutes of the game. It was, it really impressed me. Mm -hmm. And then we almost pull off a draw against but the Bafana Bafana. Yeah. It's not an it's not an easy game. Yeah. Those guys have a long history in the African tournament. So it was a very impressive just to to, to pull to pull off to pull off like three two. And yes. for me, I would really congratulate the Bright Stars mm -hmm. for doing that. And they can give us hope that they actually hope. They, 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 they hope that they're able to play they, they, they may pull off some few games mm -hmm. against Congo and Uganda uh, against Congo the Republic of Congo and Uganda mm -hmm. you know, for better results out of that. But yeah, congratulations to them. We always support the national team and the bright stars are shining. Three two, that's the least really even though we don't get a point, but that's really a good thing. We have two goals now. Because the goals actually count, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. even though you miss a point. The yeah. goals matter when it comes to the group stages. So yeah, so it was it was a wonderful game and I want to really congratulate them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I personally feel like um they they need to work more on defense. Because there, there, there seems to be a, a little volatility in the defense uh, uh, posture of, of the bright stars. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, those are very technical things. It takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, any thoughts yeah. on... on, on... And, 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 like, and like you said, really, diet, diet, diet. Our local diet, our boys need to focus on that. Yeah, yeah. Those manufactured food, eh? Yes, yes. Organic, yeah. Organic, this matter, we want to live in as a pizza, all this. Yeah, food, 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 food
Ya. Bizi do shurban aku kurang grip, kurang grip dek kalau kon haja tegi. Any any thoughts? Uh, I haven't watched the game but okay. uh, I saw some highlights as Bakumba oh. have said. Um, okay. uh, but I'm very impressed by the the, the mood that the, those tournament has brought in the country. Okay. Um I saw two people that try to sneak in the stadium. Yes. I don't know if some of you saw that. No, no. So that was <laughs> that was so funny. Okay. Yeah, but what, what uh, happened? What happened with those two people? I think th- I think they didn't get to the to the, the to the stadium through the main door, but okay. I think they yeah. didn't they didn't pay by they're trying to sneak in the in the, okay. the stadium. Yeah, yeah so yeah. they were caught, and then some of them managed to escape through. There is there was kind of an opening. Okay. Uh, I don't encourage that, but uh, I think um, sport in general is bringing the country together, and that's mm-hmm. what I like, mm-hmm. and it kind of a create kind of a mood for people to forget their own problem, mm-hmm. mood for people, kind of something that to get busy with it. So that's mm-hmm. that's my take. Like uh, I, uh, I hope the national team wins. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm one hundred. Percent supporting Bright Star uh, campaign team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope they win. Uh, I hope they kind of a progress in sport. And I think sport is something that if we can invest into it much, it kind of a something that will um, will bring the country together to some extent. Create, yeah, create kind of a sense of unity. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That that's true. That's good. Okay, let's go to our second story. South Sudanese man sentenced to 20 years in a Kenyan jail for robbery. Uh, mm-hmm. Wayne Saddam, a South Sudanese refugee in Kenya, was found guilty of robbing a, ma- uh, a, a girl in the Kakuma refugee camp of a mobile phone worth 10,000 Kenyan shillings, which is about $90. He will serve yeah. 20 years in jail for the crime. Uh, the Kenyan High Court upheld the conviction in, in the county headquarters, Lodwa. The presiding judge of the High Court sitting in the Turkana County headquarters found that the accused was properly convicted and sentenced by the magistrate's court in Kakuma. Saddam was charged with the crime, uh, but had appealed uh, uh, the, the, the sentence. Uh, the victim was Francine, a refugee girl in the Kakuma camp, and she testified for the prosecution. She had been sent, uh, sent to, to fetch her father's phone from a charging kiosk on her way home. She was accosted by three men who included the accused. The accused punched her and held her by the neck while the uh, other two emptied her pockets, taking away the cell phone. After the two robbers took off, she was able to tussle and struggle with the accused and she held him down. People came rescued and eventually the Kenyan police came and they t- uh, took the accused to, uh, into custody. That led to the charging at the Kakuma law courts, 20 years in jail. Very, very sad. Zol, Fikaku maita refugita kamambo rata la harami. Ndiye majerima ya bakumba. Ala yule, ala yule jerima kale ya. Yule yule ya kante to sit come and sit with me. Yeah. And then he's like he's stealing the refugee camp. Man, that's that's the consequences. And he's actually looking at the case. As only he's actually, uh, it's like to get 20 years. I believe over in violence in case it's a capital punishment. Yes. If I'm not wrong, I'll look it up later, but I think I think it's considered it's considered the same as prison actually. Like yeah, almost together. It's, yeah, that's why he got he got the twenty yeah. years because he's he's. He got twenty years. He got twenty years. It's like otherwise he would be. He's actually a dead fellow. Yeah, he can actually be yeah, all, all life imprisonment. Yeah. So yeah. just just because of a ninety ninety dollar worth of a phone. Mm. So like uh, uh, even though I feel sorry for <clears throat> for the guy, but you know what, crime is a crime. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Also, there's no little crime, there's no big crime. So when you, when you break the law, you face the consequences. Mm-hmm. You know, the economy is hard, but you know, it's, it's good to, to, to find you know, means of living in a legitimate way. Mm-hmm. Instead of resulting into uh, stealing, robbing people who are your fellow, most likely your fellow refugees, yeah. facing the same situation. So, yeah, yeah, he has made his consequences and it's, it's, a sad, it's very sad for him and his family. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is. Yeah, there's consequences for every action of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. quite yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. Dennis, your yeah. thoughts? Uh, I think it is very sad uh, to hear that happening for uh, South Sudanese uh, that is that, that are living in Kenya. Um, you know, it is bringing us a bad name. Mm-hmm. As I said, um, we still, our our name is not that bad like mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the crime, but 
uh, this can start to stain our name. So it is good to keep that image. Mm-hmm. Um, like what Bakumba has said, um, uh, crime is a crime, regardless of uh, how the amount of, uh, in terms of uh, the money is, but uh, for you to come and try to steal uh, is just uh, not acceptable. Mm-hmm. So, um, Ana Bitmana in Kulu Nasar Sudanin and Gadin Barra, try to give us a good name, not uh, stay in our name. Uh, yesterday I was hearing a story about um, uh, a Nigerian scammer that was um, brought to America to be um, to be trialed. Okay. I don't know if you guys know about is, that case. Is that the old case? Uh, the, 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 yeah. What was his name? The guy from Dubai? No, no, not the guy from the Dubai, but this has something to do with the scam, uh, internet scam. So okay. um, the guy was kind of uh, brought through FBI, brought from Nigeria to mm-hmm. America because okay. um, the case involved a suicide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the person that was speaking about the crime was saying that uh, people, uh, you Nigerian, you are bringing us bad name. You know. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. It is good to to because this affect other people. People who wanna travel, like for example, people who wanna travel to Kenya. Mm-hmm. So like, going forward is gonna give South Sudan its bad name. So mm-hmm. I hope um, we, as a South Sudan, we should be mindful of doing that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the guy should be deported home and, and taken to Budi County or like if Bakumba, stuck in a <laughs> hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's deported, then he's deported to some dry area there, then that is that that is good to go in there. Yeah, find him a corner somewhere in Kapoita. Yeah, and back to the story of the Kenyan, the 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 refugee who is in jail now for twenty years. Can you imagine being jailed in that long old place, man? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. Place. yeah. That yeah. is dry, mm-hmm. it is dry, and 100% of the jails there must be the worst probably in the whole country. So, yeah. if you're in the camp, man, you, you stay safe from those jails. That jail is not a good place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially in that environment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let, let's go back again to South Sudan, Juba. Um, South Sudanese journalist jailed for defamation. South Sudanese uh, journalist uh, George Ruot was arrested uh, this past Monday in Juba following a defamation lawsuit filed by the Union of Journalists of South Sudan, UJOS. Ruot was, uh, of course, uh, a vocal critic of the leadership of the union, accusing them of corruption, mismanagement of funds, altering the uh, union's constitution, and failing to convene a general assembly meeting. The Union of uh, Journalists, of course, uh, President, that is uh, Patrick Oyed, said they tried to resolve the issue with Rod amicably but failed. So it provoked the arrest, um, but it has gotten the, the 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 group a lot of criticism. Who, from other journalists, who view it as a potential uh, assault on their press freedom and a troubling president for the country's media landscape. Uh, George Rod was, of course, a program coordinator at UJOS previously, and he was representing Unity State on the National Executive Board of the of the Union. Uh, is is it is it right for 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 inter union matters to be tabled in in public very clearly like that? Uh, in your opinion, Dennis, because I think this was like an internal problem, probably a, a leadership wrangle between the group in the union, and then now it's very public. It's, it, it's gotten somebody in jail. Is it really worth it? Could they have not found uh, maybe arbitration through somebody? Uh, I think we don't have the, the full story of what exactly happened. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know much about the story. Like uh, um, uh, the 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 journalist um, did he kind of come? Maybe time like uh, there is a lot of thing that has gone inside. But um, I think. Uh, if there should have been a way for them to resolve it amicably among themselves, that would have been uh, the ideal, the ideal solution. Mm-hmm. But we don't know the dynamics of the problem. Uh, what mm-hmm. happened exactly inside uh, um, the union? Okay. But um, uh, there is a lot of things. Uh, has the union uh, progress? Um, Sometimes, if the internal communication is not up to date, uh, is not that is strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, people tend to use other alternatives, so maybe that could have been what that transpired. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. There is no way a union of journalists, you guys, are supposed to be promoting independence of the press, mm-hmm. independence of being ready to be criticized, whether you are the new just president, 
Mm-hmm. He's just criminal. It doesn't matter who you are. You should be the first people to mm-hmm. get to act the word defamation. Yeah. If, if if somebody write an article against you, defend yourself using the same article. That's why you that's why you go to school as a journalist. Freedom mm-hmm. of press. You are the first person. You guys are the first supposed to defend that right. Mm-hmm. Not 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 taking your own your know, fellow journalist to court for defamation. Write an article against him. If it's a case in the videos of any corruption, right? To debunk his theory. Mm-hmm. Let the public be the one to judge. But mm-hmm. it's very surprising. I think it's very simple for you just whoever. Whoever the president, the leaders is, me personally, I think it's, it's a shame and you need to do better. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who you are, be ready for criticism and you should be protecting the right of, uh, what, to, to criticize you guys, to, 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 to no, it doesn't matter what he says, but you, you, can, you cannot be, def- you cannot call for defamation in a, in a place where you're supposed to be fighting for free press. Defend mm-hmm. yourself using, using your computer, defend yourself using your pen. Yeah. Thank good theory. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. South Sudanese expert assumes regional role. Um, Dr. John Deng Biar Ding, a South Sudanese academic, has officially assumed the position of executive secretary at the Northern Corridor Transit and Transport Coordination Authority Secretariat in Mombasa, Kenya. He is an academic and an infrastructure development expert. While handing over his outgoing counterpart from Uganda, that's Omai Nyarandi, said his tenure as a secretary at, at the institution saw the traffic of trucks reading, uh, leading into South Sudan increase from half to two million tons this year. So Dr. Deng Biar uh, Diar said his appointment is significant, uh, significant for South Sudan, highlighting the country's growing role in uh, regional cooperation and development initiatives. The Northern Corridor is crucial for enhancing infrastructure and trade development across the East African region. It's formed by the countries from the East African community, uh, extending from you know the East all the way to the Congo. Uh, do we have enough South Sudanese experts in regional bodies and international uh, corridors of power? Of course, uh, not quite. So uh, something like this uh, with Dr. John being out there is a very positive for the country. It will encourage many people, of course, to go down the same way. Yeah, I think that's a good thing for us to yeah. have somebody who can represent us. Uh, I remember that was two years ago. There was a kind of a East African summit, mm-hmm. and then uh, kind of a South Sudanese were kind of uh, underrepresented. Okay. So it kind of a brought kind of um, grievances among the South Sudanese that they were not represented very well. Mm-hmm. But for us to have somebody um, who can represent us in the regional uh, body, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, that kind of a will give us kind of a way, uh, or at least somebody that can advocate for things that uh, we want as a South Sudanese. Mm-hmm. Abakumba? Yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of expert, yeah, you guys you don't forget uh, uh, His Excellency President Salva Kiir is the current chairman of the East African Community. So, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So, yeah. we have, so we have a prominent, prominent South Sudanese in the, in the big regional body. Yes, so, yes. So, and then I think I believe I don't know where Luca Bion is nowadays. Luca Bion is another intellectual. Yes, He's yes. Yeah, I think I think I think Uncle Luca is in in Australia now. Is is your family? Yeah, your family doing big things in Australia. Or yeah, some, one of the smartest guys. In the yeah. Country. So they 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 quite they quite a uh, lot of South Sudanese who are working working underground. Mm-hmm. And they 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 wired, but they say they love. Yeah. So okay. Then, yeah, so I think that yeah, that's a good position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So represented by the because the Northern Corridor is yeah that's a big strategic uh, route basically. That's the yeah. the, the, the lifeline. Yeah. For, for those guys that are out, uh, basically, that are landlocked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so it's a good thing. And yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I hope at, at the body he will agitate for the opening up of the Lapset project, which would connect yeah, South yeah, Sudan yeah. to Ethiopia and Kenya, yeah. all the way to the port yeah. of Lamu. That would really yeah. improve the trade because we need that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And also, did he, I think we should also advocate for a pipeline. Um, yeah. Instead of going through the North Sudan, maybe it should be something that should be um, in mind to yeah. to see a way of um, extending the pipeline, maybe through Ethiopia. Yeah, I think I think the president uh, recently talked about that when he visited China. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he he and the Chinese government had uh, talks on the same. I think they're trying to connect uh, South Sudan through Ethiopia into Djibouti, you know, 
mm. uh, to, mm. to 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 open up uh, an alternative mm. because as a you know we we having problems uh, we, yeah. with with the situation in the Sudan so yeah de- definitely um, mm. it, it would it would ease the the burden and and sometimes I also tend to think how about thinking backwards a safata congo and safata central africa that corridor also needs to be open because we can go to the atlantic you know yeah. opening up the country for 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 for, for very many opportunities economic opportunities, opportunities. yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i think it is also yeah. very strategic um because um uh for us depending on the north sudan um mm. it can be used as uh we can be blackmail yes yes like uh if yeah. uh, sudanese government let's suppose that they they kind of uh, put their house in order mm-hmm. and yeah. they happen to be in problem with the south sudan they can mm-hmm. use it as a kind of a weapon yeah uh to cripple us economically mm-hmm. so i think having an alternative i think it is uh, very strategic for our own interest yeah yeah That's why you don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. But you think you think of opening up to Central Africa and that have, have anybody any of you guys ever met somebody from Central, Central African Republic? I've never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> what, are people, what are people doing in that country? They don't move, they don't travel or what is that Central Africa our neighbors but I've never met any of Central Africa before. You you, uh, you you remember the, the the president of Central Africa from before was somewhere linked to yeah. South Sudan, right? The um, the, the, the guy yeah. who had to escape through South Sudan and there was no yeah, having yeah. Yeah, having a South Sudanese passport. Was it the baby dictator? Uh no, that that was Bokasa. Very recently, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I really? I kind of forgot his name. Yeah, but yeah, so, uh, is, is it Dennis? Dennis uh, Sasangiso? No, 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 no. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis is from Congo Republic. Well, for Congo, for Congo. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, I've never met anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think if you meet anybody from Yambio, you basically met a South Af- uh, Central African because they're more than the same. Is is Zande in Central Africa, Zande in South Sudan, in the Congo? So <laughs> you just need to say Guinea Pai, you're good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Azul. Ah, this this story, Bakumba, will fascinate you. Is 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 from Magui. A man in Magui, and has been circumcised by rats. This is from I Radio. A groundbreaking pro- uh, medical procedure was performed in Magui, Eastern Equatoria, this past week. Mm-hmm. Uh, the news, of course, spread like bushfire all over South Sudan. <laughs> the question is, how did Mr. Rat end up circumcising the man? I think oh. this is my own personal theory. Dr. Lomiji, a.k.a. Jenafar, decided to successfully perform the operation, you know, after the Magui man had a very big dose of acida. Acida Bafra, I think, you know, <laughs> and he was, yes, he was sedated, completely passed out. He, the guy's name was called Longoya. Of course, when he was busy sleeping, Kanfimotoroshuya, snoring, the rat went into action and did what it did, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I think the rat also did a press conference because I radio, Mirai FM, SSBC must have been there. We got the news, right? <laughs> um, I think he was also accusing human beings. I think this circumcision is an attack. Jamadel al Hibu, you know, had Harago, Ferano, they're Rumbaude. Be careful. <laughs> those, those guys are coming. I, I know. I'm not going to mention names, you know. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, 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 so be very careful. Umon can bother the day. We never know. There are too many rats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Then you what do you think? Gisata, Ferande, we got too much for you, but people are, mm-hmm. rats are stealing money. I mean, Raserir or something. Uh, yeah, this uh, is this is very fascinating. Um, I never see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm just wondering, how did he end up uh, being attacked by a rat? Uh, it's not an really? it's not an attack. He was literally circumcised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so I'm trying to picture. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I think he just passed out. You you know sometimes Ferrandel. Uh, when, when they when they when they're chewing on you, from my childhood, these are the stories we had. Galo baafu kuswia kida, obaadi baafu kubaadi. So yeah, he'll chew yeah. you until you finish. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but normally they they be button takura, right? When it happens, it's yeah. easy, yeah. right? 
Yeah. But uh, في محل الفار مش أكل فوق ده يعني it is just يعني يعني this man must have been like a very very uh, very drunk yeah. I guess yeah 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 but I don't know Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in Bakumba, DT kind of uh, wanted to be circumcised. That's the question. Maybe he might not want to be circumcised. So, yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so far the Bukuna Mal Haja and Ima, maybe he was <laughs> not. Uh, Dennis, I think the far was doing him a favor. That Jake Day, he needs the help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Musada West, you know. Um, he, he's, he, he's a very peaceful far who was just doing a, a very noble service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think they had to take him to a hospital in Kidgum, but they brought him back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that that's mm. that's South Sudan for you, a story which is mm. very funny. I hope you enjoyed it out there too. That's all. Okay, now you're entering dangerous territory. If you don't behave. Jelda, so you know what I mean. Uh, who is Bakumba weeping this time? Okay, now there's a video out there. Of course, mm-hmm. being a football referee is not an, an easy thing. You know, you're supposed to be an arbitrator of sports. You're supposed to be just and fair in your decisions. But sometimes, even if you're fair and just and judging by FIFA rules and regulations, somebody will think no matter what fairness you have, somebody will still think, oh. You, did, you favored my opponent, you did this or you did not do that wrong. I think Bakumba has something to say. Yeah, Jack, it's a big deal to Muna Lela. We saw that video of, uh, of, of, of this uh, referee. It's, it's a small clip, so we don't know the, the entire background, the story. If somebody has it, they can tell us the whole story. But mm. the bottom line is one of the, one of the players really went, went and punched punch the the, 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 the the referee or the linesman because I saw him falling down with his flag. Probably he, 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 might, he might have said, he must have taken a flag. The guy offside, that's my belief or anything happened mm-hmm. in, in, in that kind of scenario. But the bottom line is, like we need to understand that uh, sport is a sport, you know? Sport is a sport. Tell a referee is always, sometimes they make mistakes, but it doesn't mean he, he, uh, you are a sportsman. But part of the discipline, but that's a sport you are not supposed to to, to be physical, whether with the opponent or the arbitrator of the game, with the referee. So now they, they, they bring embarrassment to the bright star because the bright star needs people who are who are who are, who are noble. They, they represent the country, and we are not there to to know to fight our referees or if the referees are there to make mistakes. It's part of the game. We make people make mistakes. That's why they introduced the VAR for so so many years. People have been complaining about the game, right? So we need to we need to improve on that. We need to be. Some of them playing playing the game. So now nice, the little I'll uh, mind the move. And uh, mother understand soccer, mother understand sport that they are not a just son. Especially Donald Douglas. Donald Douglas. I like Donald Douglas. He looks, 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 <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so Takonas Malela, you had it. Uh, who Bakumba was whipping today? Be on the watch out. Matakun, you know, you never know. Bakumba's sword may land on you next time. So be careful. <laughs> All right. Pay 
Kupe, Bibamba, you know, and Carolina, backed by the amazing sound of Uganda's own Abika band. The concert mm-hmm. turned out to be one of the greatest music events out of the Pearl of Africa this year. Awilo and Chike, quite the ladies' men, wowed the Ugandan fans who danced their hearts out, singing out along to their songs, their favorite songs in Kampala. Of course, if you and Kampala and didn't show up for the concert, I feel very, very sorry for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you missed out. Dennis, yeah. what are your thoughts on um, Awilo being still popular like this at his age? Yeah, Awilo is popular because um, Awilo did, um, was not playing a conventional uh, Congolese music. Awilo kind of uh, came out with a different kind of a genre, which is um, called Afro Techno. Something like rapping, the beginning, Kira, the rapping. La, 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 how you say that, huh? mm. So this kind of, uh, is, is not a typical Congolese, um, Congolese music. And I will start it as an underdog. Yeah. Congolese and Awilo, they don't believe in Awilo because Awilo was nobody. Um, Awilo, he started his career as a drummer. And then he came from a very respectable school. Leano, um, Abu, Awilo was a member of the OK Jazz. And then Awilo was playing as a drummer for uh, La Viva Musica, which was uh, Papa, Wemba. Um, Papa Wemba and then King, uh, King uh, Kester, Kis- 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 Yeah. So those are very respectable school. And those school, actually, they were not playing a typical Congolese music. They were playing kind of a um, mixture of uh, R&B, rap and then uh congolese they were using congolese uh rhythm um mix uh mixing it with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, uh foreign influence so that gave a willow kind of a, a different edges kind of uh to to grow his fan base so based on that that was kept that's what kept a willow all this time and uh, his music was very infectious uh, the 19, um, early 2000 and 1990s. Yeah, and at the end of the Shamal Sudan, Mundukura de Kuluman Besma Awilo, uh, he has a lot of fun in, uh, Nigeria. Nigeria, like, uh, has, uh, like, they love Awilo genuinely. Uh. So that's what kept Awilo, like, his music was kind of very infectious. And if we ask ourselves, like, uh, what makes a great music, uh, great music is always, uh, simple melody and then uh memorable chorus yeah and I, sometimes the say to go this song i can't get it out of my mind right mm-hmm. so a willow has more like a, a lot of those songs in and i got it that you can easily remember and you can easily sing to the melodies that uh he was uh yeah, the, the song that he came up with so i think in my opinion that's what kept a willow all this time and that gave him the age to grow uh, a large fan base. Okay, yeah. and, and his connection with Chike, how did that come about? You have an idea? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know how it came about, but mm. I think Nigerian they love a willow. Okay, based on his kind of a uh, music genre that he plays, okay. and um, and this kind of a gave a willow a lot of connection with the Nigerian musician. And has has the people uh, area star. Yes. Uh, he kind of did a coverage for a willow as well. And mm-hmm. then there is a lot of Nigerian musicians that are here. Mm-hmm. Google, you know, um, P square. Uh, he did also collaboration with a willow. Mm-hmm. So a willow is still, uh, in the market compared to other Congolese uh, music and most of Congolese music as uh, an fellows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, their music is kind of uh, outdated. They can make it half like Hasi. They can make it nice dancing to Congolese music. Yeah, you can know that Zole be in the old generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, Awilo is still um, Karen, and he still has a lot to offer. And uh, and I should use him in part of the concert uh, in Uganda. Uh, the performance was really good, but the instrumentation. I think it's not that up to date. And the part you know, the more Congolese you get up the instrumentation, you can you can feel that. But in any event, it is, it was a good show. Yeah, and in terms of the present, his present on the stage, 
uh, the performance, the choreography was really very beautiful. I like it. So, Awilo is still uh, in the game, and Awilo is not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Let's go to Africa now. A uh, Ugandan man found with 24 human skulls in Uganda, Kampala. A Ugandan man, uh, Mr. Damulira Godfrey could be charged under the Prevention and Prohibition of Human Sacrifice Act. Animal remains and skins were found in the man's shrine in a suburb of Kampala. Uh, he claims to be a traditional healer and a herbalist, but Uganda's Traditional Healers Association has distanced itself from him. It was the first, it, it's not the first time that uh, such shocking news has been out of uh, the, into the public in Uganda. Last month, police discovered 17 human skulls in another uh, shrine in the central district of Mpige. That's 41, 25 miles, 41 kilometers or so 25 miles from Kampala. Both uh, discoveries, of course, have been linked to human sacrifice uh, rituals. Uh, there are people in some African countries who believe in human uh, body parts being uh, good luck charms and, you know, that you, there are things you can use to curse your enemies and things like that. Uh, quite, quite, quite difficult. Uh, uh, you guys remember somewhere in Tanzania, can Jamadi Albekatula Albino del Ketira, Takanzola Albino somewhere in Tanzania, in, in most of those southern African countries. They, in South mm -hmm. Africa, for example, they'll chop you up and use you for... I think Kilmatoma de Wishu, Muti, which is, uh, which is very, very sad. Bakumba, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, the, uh, yeah I think those are, no, 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 those beliefs in some, some of the African communities about, you know, human sacrifice and spirits and superstitions and all mm. this kind of nonsense, you know, they don't really, they, they, they don't really augur well for, for, for most of, for most of the communities. And, it's not relevant in this day and age, you know, mm. that people still have to believe in those kind of things, you know. It, it, African spirituality is there, but we shouldn't be involved in, you know, collecting body parts or, it, it, I mean, sacrificing people for, for the sake of artistic some spirit somewhere that will make you reach or whatever. Mm. I'm pretty sure I'm sitting with those girls, believing that, you know, those chants can make somebody his body family, whatever guy in that village. Yeah. Those kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. But maybe then they can make someone rich. Yeah. So, so no, 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 those are kind of uh, some some of the stupidity that uh, uh, that, that we should we should leave because yeah, you see you see a wizard a, a, a witch doctor or a wizard in a, in in a small shrine like maybe then they can make you a millionaire. Why yeah. himself is languishing in poverty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, they, so, yeah, so so things like that, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy, I'm, I'm happy they 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 have a, they have a, the traditional and this and themselves. Yeah. So the, the true the 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 true traditional doctors that are there in Africa, you know, you know, where people actually uh, we know that uh, medicines are found in the forest, the forest, the forest healers, the forest healers. So the good the good uh, traditional doctors they are same with the Chinese traditional medicine, African traditional medicine they are there. But let's stop this stupidity of, 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 of assuming that, you know, someone is gonna get rich by killing another fellow human being and mm -hmm. some stupid sacrifices here and there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Dennis, you, you know, remember when we were growing up, girl, girl, Nasmin suffered, suffered a, wow, and a girl, Mushkila as well. When it, girl, girl, Indum, Indum, Shunum, is it computers, huh? If, 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 if that kid, you see somebody, you do something. No, <laughs> can you update us? In the Ravil Banda. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, and then Finas with a troubleshooting and in the uh, robot border, they will right. troubleshoot and then they will go to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so um I, I think there is a lot of um some of the story are not true. Mm. It is just a kind of a myth that people build over time uh, yeah, yeah. about Abil Banda and all these things. Magalinum, yeah. um, those things doesn't exist. It exists, but mm. sometimes it is out of uh, desperation. People okay. want to become rich very quickly. Mm. Uh, people want to get a quick solution to their problem. Yes. And, and this thing has a spill over even to the churches. And a, a lot of... Uh, right. Yeah. Church is now, when you go to the church, it is just um, a witch doctor pre uh, performing uh, stuff to, to try to make, to convince people that they can get rich very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think 
our government should take a very strong stand mm. uh, against those things because people who uh, who who become victim of this one of those kind of action are are just normal people, uh, very naive people, gullible people that they may not have a deep insight of what is happening. Mm. Um, yeah, and has some. I have seen that a lot of um, churches in Kanpi, Nigeria, human Jiro of South Africa try to to do some their stuff there. Like, people there are more gullible mm-hmm. and and trying to get money. And it can enter. The the main idea is uh, to extract money for from poor people. Mm-hmm. So um, going back to the story, uh, I think Zola Katal Naza. It is coming from that kind of idea, desperation. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. uh, if you can get human is called into this result, um, you're gonna get rich and without with zero effort. Mm-hmm. This thing doesn't happen. How you learn that? Is stress for who are Maudupta? There are true traditional healer fee in the mm-hmm. African listener. Yeah. But those yeah. people, they don't choose themselves. Those people are being chosen. Yeah. Mm. And it is not for any malicious intention. Mm. And those things are done uh, to intercede on the behalf of the community. And yeah. people who are chosen, they are chosen based on their own integrity and mm. how they carry their life. Yeah, and it's an to Zola, a true herbalist or true traditional healer. Mm-hmm. They, they are a person full of integrity. Okay. Uh, they are very respected. And I agree, my, those associations who, who distance themselves from this, the action of this guy, mm. they could be right. Uh, uh, this doesn't represent a true African spirituality. Mm-hmm. And, right. and I think, um, see, if you Rwanda, yeah. it's like Fatra, Paul Kagame uh, issue a law about yeah. those kind of actions. Yeah. And I think it is the responsibility of government to protect people, mm. to make right. sure that the proper law is in place, Mm-hmm. So that the citizens are really protected, yeah. and it is it is crazy what is happening these days. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I hope the police in Uganda can use uh, DNA mm-hmm. technology to 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 check who skulls those are, mm-hmm. and and then if they can figure out twenty four seventeen skulls, it is yeah, that's too many people, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, quite quite unfortunate. Uh, mm-hmm. Let, let's go to Kenya across the border from Uganda. A love triangle has landed a Kenyan man in jail. Uh, in the coastal town of Malindi, a man will spend 10 years of his life in jail. Meanwhile, the woman he cohabited with, whose husband he killed, walks free. The two had been charged with the murder of Mr. Kalume on February 16, 2019. Both had pleaded guilty. The accused Mr. Mzungu Dad was found guilty of the murder of the late Swale Kalume, who had come to his homestead to reclaim his wife. Naema, the woman in the love triangle who was also charged with the murder, was acquitted as the court ruled that no evidence was presented to prove that she was involved in the murder. Uh, she had left her late husband due to neglect. A witness testified that Mr. Dadu, the accused, had armed himself with a club, which he used to strike the late Kalume on the head. The accused denied committing the offense, saying he was not even home on the fateful day. He had gone out to tap wine in the neighborhood and remained there until the following day. But witnesses linked him to the murder, and a post-mortem mm-hmm. report established that the deceased suffered from injuries to the head, which caused his death. Kalam ta 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 hoop this up sometimes, huh? This guy is going to stay in jail for a long, long time, and the woman he was having a good time with is free. The Jerima Jahis, you know? Yeah. yeah. Quite, quite yeah, difficult. Really. Yeah, this is a very, yeah, this is a very difficult story, and that, and that is always a message for men, you know. Mm. Like if 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 if, if love doesn't work, you know, don't, don't take matter into your own hands because you mm. will be jail, and 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 and, and, and your, 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 your 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 ear will be somebody will be chewing you properly. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You'll be not in jail. So if yeah. things don't work out, please walk away. There are so many other opportunities out there. There's a lot of relationships out there. You know, mm. you can always you can always move on. You don't have to resort to violence. It's not worth taking anybody's life for the sake of, you know, for the sake of, you know, love or whatever you wanna call it. Mm. So so he be jail and the the his his lover will move on, somebody's gonna be chewing her while mm. you know what's in here. Yeah. And the jail is not a fun place. You know, I hear in Kenyan jails are very dangerous. You, you will end up being chewed by another man inside that jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I think uh, love should be free. Um, mm-hmm. um, normally, like uh, you should love the person that you love to make them feel that they're free uh, to do whatever. My God, to do whatever they want to do, but um, you cannot hold somebody um, at the gunpoint to be with you. Mm-hmm. Normally, if a person want to be with you, they will be with you. If they don't want, um, but you cannot resolve into into violence. Yeah. There There is many options out there. So mm. um, if things doesn't work out, uh, you need to do yourself a favor. Yeah. Work out peacefully and preserve life. Yeah. Yeah. That brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Yazol TV, and then our Facebook page. Uh, Dennis had to leave early, so I take this chance to thank Dennis, to thank Bakumba. Uh, this has been Yazol TV. And salute to the Bright Stars for always doing us very good uh, service. Uh, may God bless South Sudan, and we look forward to the game on October 7th. Azul.